We start with our newsmaker segment and open our discussions about the school finance issue and related topics with an official from the Kansas Policy Institute. Dave Trobert is the Institute's president and a frequent spokesman for the group on radio and television. His articles have appeared in numerous state newspapers and nationally in the Wall Street Journal, Investors Business Daily, and the Washington Times, among others. We are very pleased to welcome Dave Trobert to Ruckus. Dave, it's a pleasure to meet you, and thank Thanks. you very much for coming in. Thanks, Mike. It's good to be here. What is the Kansas Public Institute? What does it do? Kansas Policy Institute is a nonprofit education and research organization. We use the constitutional principles of personal freedom and limited government to solve problems in ways that create the best path forward for everyone to achieve prosperity. And is privately financed? It's, uh, we're nonprofit. We accept no government money. We're funded by people who want us to help them protect their liberty. Is it fair to say it is a conservative-oriented organization? Conservative, fiscally conservative, yes. We don't uh, engage in any social issues, so sometimes conservative kind of connotes uh, attention to some of the social issues, but we, we stay focused on fiscal issues and education. Well, you certainly engage in the issue of school finance in Kansas and the Supreme Court rulings, the latest of which was just a week or so ago. And once again, the Kansas Supreme Court says the state does not provide enough money or enough money equitably for the school districts in Kansas. You agree with that? No. Uh, this Supreme Court ruling is, is no surprise uh, because it's, it's all about money. Uh, an education finance system is supposed to be about improving outcomes and closing achievement gaps, especially for the low-income kids. Uh, you know, we have an education crisis in Kansas, but it's not money. The money is at an all-time high. Uh, we used to uh, measure the time it would take to close achievement gaps in decades for low-income kids. Now, about $2 billion later, we have to measure those gaps in centuries. And so what, what the court did here was um, they, they, their role, by their own ruling, their role is to determine whether funding was reasonably calculated. Not setting an amount, but did the legislature use reasonable thought process in arriving at it? And so the legislature did its job. They followed the court's guidance. They even used what's called a successful schools model to arrive at their funding. Uh, and, and that successful schools model was used by the court in Montoy. Well, now they say that was the original court. That was the original school finance. Apparently, the court doesn't agree. Right. Doesn't think that the rules were followed properly. Uh, some Republican legislators are saying we're just going to ignore this, and we should just ignore this. What would happen if the legislature said no? We're not going to do it. I think what the legislature should do uh, is uh, put students first. Uh, this court does not put students first. They are not focused on educational outcomes. They're focused on money and power. So I think what the legislature should do is put a formula in place that includes accountability for improving outcomes, that includes accountability for efficient use of taxpayers' money. And they should also take steps to ensure that kids have a right to an education. You know, the court's solution is they say 75% of the kids seem to be doing all right. We just have mm -hmm. a problem with 25%. Their solution is pay our ransom or we're going to deprive 100% of the students well, from an education. What, what do you think the court could do or would do if the legislature said, no, we're not going to follow your directive? Whether they said no or whether they said, here's more money, and the court says, that's still not enough. It, it frankly may never be enough. The schools want $1.4 billion but, but what would the court do? Would it close the schools? Would it take well, over Well, the court doesn't control the National Guard. I understand that. So they would have to try to cut off funding uh, and or intimidate local school boards from opening. So what the legislature should do in response is ensure that schools stay open. They do that by making sure that there is a funding mechanism so that the money can get to the schools. And if the local school boards choose not to open, then the legislature should pro provide an education savings account for students in any district that doesn't open. Do you, do you think there should be a change in the state constitution making more clear what legislature is required to do with regard to school finance. It's vague and can be interpreted in a million different ways now. Yeah, Mike, I think not only should it, I think it must. I think the, uh, the, the future of education and the economic vitality of Kansas depends upon changing that constitution so it's very clear how schools are to be funded. Are we going to see an income tax increase in this session of the legislature? I think there are some people who, on one hand, say we should give the schools what the courts want. 
But many of those same people, if you ask them, will you support another $600 million tax increase, they want to run for the door. I don't know. And, and here's the scary thing. It's not just this $600 million tax increase. There's another one coming within two years because the legislature, balance, they didn't balance the budget. Yeah. I, I should note the court never gives any indication of how much money it thinks would, would meet its objectives. Well, they're, they're being cute. They're yeah. saying, they're saying no, we're not going to give you a number. But if you don't, it's pretty clear. If you don't meet this minimum, yeah. we're going to close but, but the minimum changes from person to person, attorney oh, sure. to attorney. Uh, you hear 600 million, you hear a billion, you hear more. Got to stop it there. Dave, a pleasure to meet you. Okay. Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks, Mike. That is Dave Trobert. He is president of the Kansas Policy Institute. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.